Hello and welcome to Happy Vending. I'm Bill and I'm once again in Wildwood, New Jersey seeing if I can get this old 1970s Dixie Narco Coke machine to reliably work again. Let's do it. Happy vending. If you saw my first video on this Coke machine, you'll know that this is uh, an old 1970s Coke machine located in North Wildwood, New Jersey in a parking lot, a half a block from the beach here in the boardwalk. And this machine behind me um, hasn't worked for nine years is what we figured out. And if you want to know all the details about it, watch the first video. I'll throw the link down below. And luckily I had a gentleman that I met online he asked to be left anonymous. He was uh, scrapping a Dixie Narco 430, which is newer than this machine, but still, it was a single price machine. All the parts were compatible. And he agreed to, before they scrapped it, to pull out a lot of parts and send them to me. So I got the key components that I need to fix this. And all I really had to pay for was shipping to get the parts here. He was very generous in that he, he donated the parts to me. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to put in here. They're not new parts, but they are working parts, and that's what's most important. First, most importantly here, we have a working cooling deck that is going to fit in this single price, uh, two deep machine. And then we have over here a newer coin mech than the one that's in there. It has, you know, it's, it still has the the nine pin Jones plug, but this one is all electronic. Whereas the one that's in the machine has the cradles and the, and the counterbalances and the bumpers in it. And it's got a lot of moving mechanical parts. Whereas this one just simply has the little light, the LED lights that read the coins as they shoot by and like the metal detector inside it to determine what coins are in there. Plus it has the three columns for the quarters, nickels, and dimes, whereas the uh, one that's in there just has two tubes and nickels to give change. And he also was able to find some original flavor strips. I printed some myself, but these are original brand new, like new old stock flavor strips for this machine. And then also what was donated to this project is, this is great, a new bezel for the front with all the hardware that we need. Well, not a new bezel, but a newer looking bezel. And it has the plunger there for the coin release. Whereas the one that's on here, notice it's, it's very worn because, you know, we're down the shore here. You got a lot of saw there, but notice it's missing the coin plunger there. And then what we're gonna do is I bought some new light bulbs, I actually went to the electronic supply place and I'm gonna get the lights working in here because people need to know that this thing is actually operational. It hasn't worked in nine years. We'll scrape off the old 50 cent labels because you can't really make money to sell drinks for 50 cents. It's not worth your time anymore. So I talked with the owner. Um, we agreed on making the drinks a dollar, a dollar a can, which is reasonable. The owner of this lot, George, he actually is on vacation right now. He's in Alaska. He wanted to go to Alaska while weather is fairly nice there. So he's not here, but his son is here running the lot, whose name is also George. And you know, he has the key still, so we're good to go. You know, while I'm at it, I'm gonna lube up this lock a little bit. Now you don't want to just, you know, use anything to lubricate a lock. You don't want to like just squirt in some WD-40 because that type of lubricant is a good cleaner, but what happens is it breaks down quick and it attracts dirt. And next thing you know, your lock is full of dirt. I like to use this, you see this? This is uh, this blaster. It's made for garage doors. It's a silicon, well, it has Teflon in it, silicon-based lubricant. And this is designed to not attract any dirt or grime. And I'm gonna spray this in this lock before I open her up.
Oh, that's, that's working so much better. I'm gonna throw a little bit in the, just around the T-handle itself. Everything corrodes down here. So you wanna make sure you're using the right lubricant and you're lubricating occasionally. We'll also spray the little latch in here with a little, little lubricant. Have that go up and down. Ah, uh, yeah. That's good. You hear that? I'm gonna lubricate those hinges too. Let's get in here and lubricate her up. A lot of rust in these hinges because once again, this is down the shore and the salt, <laughs> salt air just rusts everything. Something else that we need to do with this machine, I forgot to mention here is this power cord that has been rigged up here. I don't know who did this, if George did this, but it's a piece of Romax being used as a power cord. It's too stiff. I'm, I found that there were, some of these wires were shorting out last time. Uh, I'm gonna just take this off, it's first thing. Take this off and put the proper power cord on. And I actually got this guy, uh, my wife's Keurig machine died last month and before we threw it away, I cut off the power cord. And uh, this is a great power cord. I'm looking at it, this is like 15 gauge wire on here. And it, of course, it's a grounded plug. Let's cut off the old power cord right about here. This thing is a joke. With this, you have three wires. The green is ground. The black is your hot. And the white is your neutral. And you're probably thinking, well, how am I gonna know on this? I know I see the green, so we kinda know the green goes to the, the ground. But how am I gonna know which one to put on the hot and which one on the neutral. Well, with these power cords that have a rib on them, the ribbing is an indication of the neutral line. So this ribbed cable goes to the white and the other one will go to the hot, the black, and then the green with the ground. Let's strip these wires. Twist them. And let's strip the wires on the power core. We'll do the ribbed one first onto the white, which is the neutral, and then throw a wire nut on there. Just as an extra precaution so the wire nuts don't fall off, you always want to throw on some electrical tape. It's common procedure. Also keep some of the corrosion out of there. But there we go. Got our new power cord in there, ready to go. Here's the clamp I'm going to throw on here. And there's actually, I don't know if you can see, there's a couple holes drilled in this metal box. I'm going to put the clamp right on that that hole that's already there. I've got a clamp from the original power cord. So I'm gonna undo that screw and put this power cord in there too. So it'll have two clamps keeping pressure off of the cord. Get this clamp on here. Make sure we're not pinching any wires. Good and tight. This clamp here is just enough to keep the pressure off the wire nuts. It's going to be easier to put that wire clamp on if I get this compressor out of here. 
So once again, I gotta take off the product chute and pull this old compressor out. Then I'll secure this cable and get the new compressor in. When I last worked on this, I didn't put all the screws back because I knew I'd be coming in here again to finish this job. So it's not gonna be too hard to get this out. We did clean this product chute though the last time we were here, so this is still okay. Coming out the wrong side of this wire harness, but if it breaks, it doesn't matter. We're replacing this anyhow. So we got the old cooling deck out, and you can just see how corroded it is. Look at this dryer unit here. It's just almost corroded completely through the compressor itself. The fins on the condenser here are all disintegrating. The evaporator is still in pretty good shape. Here is the three-in-one relay that we tried to put on there last time. And fix the compressor that didn't work but I mean I, I will take that off I mean that's still good we'll use that eventually for something first we'll sweep out all this sand and debris here before we try putting in a new coin deck. well not really a new coin deck but a working coin deck to get a refurb coin deck for this machine I priced it they were like $299 plus you had to pay for shipping. So they were kind of pricey. So I'm really lucky that I got one donated to us <clears throat> for this project. This video has a sponsor. Although he doesn't want to mention his name. He knows who he is. And we thank him. Here's the clamp. There we go. Excellent. Actually, let me sweep out this part too. This pan up here. You don't want debris washing down into the drain hole for the evaporator. I want to make sure that's. I want to make sure that's clean so that water doesn't pool up here. Get the uh, replacement cooling deck out. All right. Thank you, fellas. Before I put this in the machine, I'm gonna take off this old foam, at least these pieces that are worn away. And I got some new stuff. It's a little bigger than this, but you know, I'll zip tie it in and make it tight. And I got this stuff here at Home Depot. It's, it's really for a thicker line, but you know, sometimes you just gotta make it work. Cut it right about here. Put a lot of zip ties because it was bigger than what you needed, so you really had to tighten it up to make it really do anything. But that looks good. Gotta get it over those studs. Mounting studs. Watch out for this harness.
pretty good fit. We do want to address this part of the machine here. This is where the wires and the tubes come up from the bottom of the machine to the upper part of the machine. You don't want any air leaking through here from like hot air from the compressor getting up into the cold air of the, the cabinet where all the sodas are. So that's why you, you want to make sure that any open spaces here are filled in with something. Like they had this putty in there, which is good, but if that doesn't fill in the area, I'll fill in the extra area with like some of this stick on insulation just to shove it in there to take up that extra room so that when I put this little wire or this little plate over that there's no air gap in there where um, hot air is coming up into the cold air. So let me just cut a little piece of this. This is like for an air conditioner around the window. Get that all in there. Fill that extra space, and then I left the screw here from last time. After time, this will get pushed down flat from the door closing on it, but that'll help seal it even more. Even though this is from a newer machine, these are pretty universal with all the single price Dixie machines, the two deep single price machines. These cooling decks are pretty universal. I'm going to make sure all this stuff is in here tight. You don't want any rattling when the fans are going. Even though it's outside, you still want the machine to be quiet. And we will put the metal clips back on the upper shroud here. There's two metal clips. One over here. I'm missing this metal clip. I'll have to go to the hardware store then. See if I can get a metal clip for over there. I'm missing that one. I do have the screw for this wiring harness. Good. Here is the cooling deck plug. And that plugs into the power brick. Right here. Right like that. And I'm gonna feed that new power cord out back in the back of the machine and plug that in. And then I think the circuit breaker might be off and I'll just have George turn it on. There she is. Sounds nice. The operator fan on. They're already getting cold. Oh yeah, it's already getting cold. This is a refrigerator thermometer. It's a hot day out today. You can see it's 92.6 degrees right now. And we're going to throw this in here around where the thermostat gauge would be. It's actually behind the evaporator. And uh, I'm going to close this up and we're going to see what it gets down to. The thermometer is already down to 90, so it's already cooled. Let's uh, close it up and I'll come back. While this is cooling, I'll go out and get that metal clip for the shroud and make sure that's good and tight. I'll be back. I got the clips I need. Now I'm taking a little lunch break and since I'm in Wildwood, I'm headed up to the boardwalk on Wildwood Avenue. I'm going to grab myself a slice of Max. You can't come down the to Wildwood and not grab a slice of Max at least once. I've tried all the pizza on the boardwalk and believe me, Max is the best. I don't want any comments that Sam's is better. I mean, Sam's is fine, but it just tastes like any other pizza you can get at home. Whereas Max, it's got a blend of mozzarella and cheddar and it's got the sauce on top of the cheese, thin crust, nice and greasy. Just the way you like it. There it is. Max pizza. Hi, little well done to go. Look at that. Piping hot. Nice and gooey. Don't 
delicious. Wildwood check. Perfection. It's been a couple hours uh, since I closed up the machine, so we're gonna open it, see how cool it got inside, and hopefully it's somewhere in the 40s. And if it is, then we'll start getting all the other stuff situated. This should open a lot easier now that we lubed this up. I sprayed the back of it too and the spring in there, the sides of it. It's working really good. Frost has just come pouring off of this thing. But, oh, look at this. 33.2 degrees and that frost is just pouring off but you know there's no solid block of ice in there it's just nice and frosty and cold just the way it should be I did manage to find a clip for this here I had to go to an auto supply place the hardware stores didn't have anything like that got these here it's basically this it's got a hole in it to put a screw in but we don't need the screw. Couldn't find anything like the original clips. But whatever works, works. Uh, yeah. There we go. We don't want air leaking out the top. We want that to be uh, sucking out through that for maximum coldness in the air. There we go. Nice tight fit on that shroud. I'm confident now that this cooling deck is, is working great and it's gonna keep this machine cold. So now it's time to throw the product chute back in there over top of it. I'm gonna throw one of these self-tapping screws in here. The other compressor didn't have any screws holding it down, so one screw is better than no screws. There we go. Well, let's take off the motor cover and just make sure that all the motors are spinning. switches and the motors appear to be working but down here this area is very dirty you know the brake you know you got like syrup and rust and whatnot so I have electrical cleaner I'm just gonna clean all those so that the brakes don't stick on these you now before you do that you want to disconnect power so that you don't get electrocuted now we could pull this plug out which sends power to the, the door. Now these shouldn't work anymore. Okay. So here's what I have, some tuner cleaner. Uh, you could also use Windex if you didn't have this. I'm just gonna spray this area. they work freely in here we should be good you know sometimes it's better of course if you take these apart and clean them out of the motor but I'm in a bit of a crunch for time here I mean if I had I have some re some replacement motors that I could throw in here if I had to and then when these are out of the machine I could clean them and they could be backup motors God knows the last time these were clean. Remember, this machine hasn't worked in nine years. I'm gonna work these. Now here is that older coin mat that I told you about. Nine pin. There we go. This thing. 
This thing is a dinosaur. So here we got the two coin mechs next to each other. This is the old one that was in the machine. And this is the newer one that was sent to me by a very kind gentleman. You can only set one price for all your products on a, on a machine like this. So you set them with these little switches. You can see them right here. There's six switches on this machine. And right now I see the first four are in the on position. So you, each one of these is equal to a different uh, money denomination. The very first one all the way to the left is a nickel. That one's turned on. If that were the only one on, then pri uh, drinks would be set for a nickel. The second one is also on. That's equal to 10 cents. So you add 10 plus a nickel, that's 15. The third one is equal to 20 cents. So you would add th those three. 20 plus the 10 is 30, and then the nickel is 35 cents. But the fourth one is also on, and that is equal to 40 cents. So 40 plus the 20, that would be 60, plus a dime, 70, and the nickel is 75. So this machine was set for 75 cents drinks but we want it to be a dollar. Now this next one over is 80 cents. So I'm gonna have to turn on the five that's gonna be 80. We want the number three, which is the 20, and these first two we're gonna turn off, which is the dime and the nickel. So now I have the 20 cents and the 80 cents which should equal a dollar. The six pin is actually equal to, I think, a dollar sixty or something like that. So we definitely don't want that one on. And now we're going to close this up and install it. These three screws line up with the holes and then it will drop right down into position. I'm gonna tighten up one of the screws so if somebody jostles the machine, this thing doesn't come flying out of here. Now we'll plug in the Jones plug. You can only plug this in one way. These are the interface cables for the dollar bill acceptor, which we don't have. We'll just shove that off to the side, get that out of the way, and there we go. Now let's plug in the door of the machine and see if this works. So the mech has power because the ejector buttons are working. And fell through. They're falling through. I'm gonna put nickels directly into the nickel slot. I wanna fill this machine up with some change so that it knows it has change. Now that it has some change in there, Let's throw coins down the top and see if it holds them. Yeah. There might be an issue with coin max. I'm just gonna move on. I'm gonna address these lights, see if we can get them to work. I have the door unplugged. You don't wanna play around with these with power. Not only do I have the door unplugged, I'm gonna unplug these plugs going to the lights because this is 120 volts going to these and you don't want to mess with them. If you look up here, there's two bulbs. I took this one out so that I could get a replacement. I was gonna get a direct wire LED bulbs where I just run uh, current up here and bypass the transformer or the little ballast here and, and bypass the starter and just direct drive the LEDs, but these are an odd size. These are 33 inch and I couldn't, uh, they didn't make direct fit um, LED bulbs or direct wire LED bulbs. I could have special ordered LED bulbs that ran off these ballasts, but they had the 33 inch tubes in stock. So I just got them and I got new starters. But if you see this one here, this one, the, the screw fell out here and it actually is falling down. It belongs up here. So I'm just gonna put a new screw in this so that the light is in the correct position. I'm gonna use one of these big screws up in there. 
There we go. That bit in there. That's good. All right. Let's take out this bulb and this starter. Put the new starters and bulbs in and hope that fixes it. Otherwise, you know, it might be these little ballast transformers and then we'd have to find replacement ones of those. Here are the new starters. Here are the new bolts. All right. That looks good. Gotta plug in the wires here. Plug in the door and hopefully they light up. Uh, this one came on wasn't seated. That one came on too. I mean maybe need to clean these these sockets here. They are lit right now so that's promising. Maybe we won't need the transformer. Yeah I just unplugged the door and they went off. I plugged in the door and they both came on. All right. We're gonna consider that okay for now. Let's address the bezel on the front. Let's get that replaced. I have the power to the door off again. I'm gonna disconnect the exact change lamp. This plastic coin chute is not in the best shape, but I don't have a replacement for that. So we're just going to have to reuse that up. The stud broke. I'll spray a little lubricant on the other nut so I don't break the other nut. There we go. That nut came off without breaking. There's the old one. I'm gonna take the plastic coin chute off of the old one and slap it on the newer one. There's two screws in here that go into these holes. This front comes off of this and make it easier. Just don't break any of this plastic because I don't have a replacement. This is nice because it has this part here which stops coins from flying, you know, straight forward and missing the coin chute. The other one was missing this piece and I'm sure coins were not getting where they belonged because of that. Everything's there for a reason. Let's slide this in. Perfect. Look at that. Looks like a new machine. What a coin return. These two screws in here. I'm going to put the one nut that I still have. Remember, the other one broke off. Hook up the correct uh, exact change light. There's two connectors on that. What I'm just going to do right now is see if I can scrape off these 50 cent signs, a sticker, of this. Uh, to do this, I'm going to squirt it with a little WD 40. I don't like to use WD 40 as a lubricant, but to clean off an old sticker, and I have a plastic scraper, sometimes it works well. Let's try that.
gonna spray a little more oil on the sticky stuff. Let that soak so we can get off the sticky adhesive. It's left from the stickers. As I was cleaning up the stickers, I kind of realized why the coin mech wasn't taking quarters because I didn't have any product in the machine. And if all of the sold out switches are in the sold out position, the coin mech's basically saying, I can't take any money because I can't sell any product and it's just going to eject all the coins, which is exactly what it should do. So I'm gonna put some cherry coke One of the columns, column one over there. And then we'll try putting money in this machine. Now that's a that's a rookie mistake. I'm actually ashamed of myself for not knowing to do that. I have four quarters. Took it. Took good and good. I heard it bend, although since it's not primed, I'm going to have to bend it a second time. These are my last four quarters. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up this machine so that the, the sodas start getting cold. I'm gonna put the front to the back. I don't think it'll really matter. They're pretty equal both ways, but if I put it to the back, you can see the expiration dates of the cans when you look in the machine without having to pull them out. So you kinda know if the sodas are fresh or cold. Some bar, gotta have root beer. Well, let's throw the Mountain Dew in the last column. I took a couple hours dinner break, and you know, with the sodas in there, have it closed up, so hopefully it's cooling the cans. We still have this taped off so that nobody bends yet. I still haven't primed the machine to get all the sodas down so that nobody gets a dry vent. So we're gonna open it up and see what the temperature is in the cabinet and just make sure everything's good and cold. Temperature is 40. That's a really good temperature. Like I told you before, you want it to go anywhere from 35 up to 45, somewhere in that 10 degree range, but 40 degrees is excellent temperature for a soda. These all feel nice and cold. So somebody's gonna be getting cold drinks. Let's pull off the cover and just prime these columns just by hitting the switch instead of putting money in. So we just want to make it so that the, the sodas fall. So that column is primed. So column two has Diet Cokes, that's primed. Column three has cherry cokes. Column four has barks. All right, column five has one of my favorites, the Grape Fanta. And column six has the Mountain Dew. So they're all good to go. Got some nice soapy water. All right, let's sponge her off. The product here is nice. 
place is clean where people get their drinks from. Clean the inner door and this weather stripping. It's got to make a good seal to keep the cabinet cold. And of course the product door. This is where the door makes a seal. Look up here. These are the windows. Ah uh, yeah. Dirt's just cleaning off of them. That way the light will actually shine through these. Hit this with a clean rag. Get all that dirt off of there. Want good projection through this. We want everybody to see it lit up so they know this vendor is working again. All right, while the machine is air drying, before I slap on some wax, I'm gonna take out these four buttons and see if I can jostle out these old label strips and then put the new ones in. I'm gonna unplug the uh, door as I play with these. These selection switches, they just have two screws in them using a flathead screwdriver here. I'm gonna take these out. The nuts are underneath, so you gotta stop them from spinning. This just slides out. Sometimes to get out an old flavor strip, I use a new flavor strip to move it around. And kind of push it underneath it, pull it out, or you try to get it over top of it. In the newer machines, you can take it the whole flavor strip section apart and you never have this issue. I almost hold it. I got tiny little tweezers from my Swiss Army knife and I can reach in there and try to grab it with the tweezers. I broke off part of the one end. Now I'm trying to pull the other end out. Oh, a couple chunks broke off of it. I think we'll be good. Here it comes. Oh. Here it comes. I got it on its side. Whoa. Yeah, it's going in much nicer now. There it is. Notice I left a little extra of the strip coming out so somebody can grab onto that and pull that out to change the flavor strip. All right, now I just gotta do the others. So I shoved the new flavor strip in front of all the old ones. There's like three old ones in there and I'm gonna, I shoved my um, tweezers in there and I'm gonna try to put pressure on this and pull out. Oh, see I got one. What was I telling you, it was a cardboard box and that was making it hard to get everything out. So I got the one hard one in out. Now the pieces, of the official old Coca-Cola label are starting to fall out. I almost got another one of these pieces of cardboard. Let's see. Bend it up so I can grab it with my fingers. There we go. That was a Pepsi. And there's still an old Coca-Cola, a couple old Coca-Colas in here. There we go. Another cardboard box with Coke on it. Now we just got the remnants of a plastic flavor strip. This is probably the hardest thing I have to do on this machine all day is get these flavor strips out. I didn't think this would be the hardest thing I'd have to do, but 
It is. If anybody knows a better way to get these out without busting apart this button and then having to re-glue it together, let me know. Yeah, you got the one little stubborn piece. Now the big piece fell down. This one took a lot of finagling, but I finally got out all four labels that were in there. And now I'm gonna put in the Coca-Cola Classic. New old stock going in there. Look at that, beautiful. This button I took completely out. I did realize that if you take the sold out switch out, you can get up in there and, and push down, which does make it a little easier. And this one, once again, it's got multiple cardboards in it from soda can cases. The reason we're taking these out is if George wants to switch out drinks, if you leave a bunch in there, it becomes hard to then take out one and then put the other ones in because you always got to put them in front of everyone else. And if there's three or four ven uh, flavor strips in there, you can't maneuver the new one in front. So I'm just taking this extra time to get them all out to make it easier for them down the road. It's already nighttime. Spent a ton of time getting these flavor, flavor strips out. I think this is gonna be the last one. Oh no, there's a Diet Coke back there. I got a Sprite out. Here it comes. This is the last one. An old Diet Coke. Ah! Oh no. There's another Diet Coke in there. Here it comes. Here it comes. Putting in the, not new, but new old stock, Diet Coke, old design, which is appropriate. Nice tab coming out so you can pull it out later. And that's how we like it. All right, over here, it's hard to see, but this is George Jr. This is uh, George Sr.'s son. Third. And you're the third. Yeah, he's the second. Okay, we got George the third here, and uh, he's in charge of the lot right now. And we're about to light this up, George. Tell me what you think when you, uh, when was the last time you saw it lit? Uh, at least 10 years. At least 10 years. So you go over there, I'm gonna plug it in and you'll see, them, see her light up, hopefully. Look at that. Wow. And I even clean these lenses here. They light up these buttons. I don't think I've ever seen them light up at all. <laughs> I didn't know they could light up. <laughs> Look wow. at that. Look at that. People are going to be coming from miles away. Wow, for sure. Let's do a challenge. Let's put three quarters, two dimes, and a nickel. I have faith in your abilities. What will, what will George try though then? What will he want? I bet George is not going to go for Diet Coke. There's no way. Good. It's going with the classic. Coca-Cola classic. There she is. Can I get a happy vending? Happy vending. <laughs> now I'm going to come back tomorrow and hit this with a coat of wax and try to clean up these buttons, but just in case somebody comes by and wants to get a drink, we gotta leave the price on there. And I'm using some extreme heavy duty double-sided tape. And you gotta peel the back off of this stuff. And I laminated this sign to protect it. And this will cover over the remnants of the 50 cents that was there. You hold this for 30 seconds. There we go. One dollar, 12 ounce cans. You can see how nice and clean we made these lenses that light up the selection buttons now. Good morning, I'm back here at the vending machine for day two and I just wanna do some final touch-ups on this. Hit this with a coat of wax and see if we can clear up these, these uh, plastic buttons a little bit. Uh, first, I do want to open it up and just see what the temperature is. I still left my thermometer in there overnight, so it had a whole night to cool, and we'll, we'll see what the cabinet's at. 
A lot of good frost is coming off of it. Oh, look at that. You see that? It's 36 degrees. It's great temperature. Great temperature for drinks. The uh, condensation pan is getting filled. I'm gonna dump out this water. You should have soakers in here, which are little sponges to wick up that water, but they don't have them. And it's only gonna, if it leaks, it's only gonna leak out here outside. So it doesn't make a big deal. Not a lot of condensation in the upper pan. I did clean out the drain back there a little bit. I shoved a, um, a clothes hanger that I bent out into a rod down there just to clean out all the goo. So that's draining well. Everything's draining down to there. Compressor's running great. A little hack that I've been seeing on TikTok, I have no idea if it works or not, is people are using this off bug spray on clouded headlights on their car and, you know, spraying it on there and polishing it off and it clears up the headlights, at least what I see on, on TikTok. So I figured, uh, I mean, why not give it a try and uh, see if this thing actually works? There's really nothing to lose here. And I'll keep those green flies away too. See, it's getting all, you see that it clouds it up and it does polish off. Certainly better than it was. It doesn't look brand new, but it did get some of the yellowing off of it. And then the issue is it's a little bit of tacky. It leaves a tacky residue. It really did clear up here, but I'm gonna hit it with some alcohol now, just to get rid of the, the bug spray smell and the stickiness. Now I'm gonna throw a coat of wax just on the front part and the side, so I'm gonna use my McGuire's cleaner wax. It doesn't hurt to wax them like it would wax a car. It's gonna protect it from the sun. You see the color coming out a little bit. Unfortunately, this paint is pretty far gone. It's all cracked from the sun. Wax will help protect it from future damage. Got a clean rag here. I'm just gonna buff out the wax now. Wax on, wax off. That's as good as it's going to get on the front. Let's hit the sides. Boy, that sun is really starting to beat down now. This side's in the shade, so it's not so bad doing this side. I'm dripping like a faucet. I'm done cleaning this. Before I call this a done deal, I just wanna test every selection here and make sure it vends everything because I haven't done that yet. So right now, there's no credit in it. Put a quarter, another quarter, that's 50. Put a nickel, 55, another nickel, 65, 75 and one more quarter, and we'll do the first one. I, I think I need one more nickel, I counted wrong. Maybe one more nickel. My math is off. Uh, if you could feel this, it's ice cold. Let's just put four quarters in. Do. Do. There we go. Selection two, Diet Coke.
Selection three, Cherry Coke. Let's do selection four, root beer. It is ice cold. And do selection six, Mountain Dew. And finally, my grape soda. Let's throw in a quarter, a dime, 35. 40, that was a nickel, 45, another nickel, another nickel, 50, and I happen to have two quarters. And we'll end with a grape soda. And there it is. All six selections are vending, and I know the sold outs are working, the sold out switches, because remember when I put the coin mech in, and I was trying to put coins in, in the uh, coin acceptor they were going through, which was telling the machine that, hey, I'm completely sold out. So those sold out switches are working. Hopefully it'll make uh, George and his son, George III, some money here at the parking lot. So if you're in Wildwood, stop down to 24th and the boardwalk and go to the day trippers lot and get yourself a nice cold drink. Cheers, and as always, happy vending. It was a